All right, so I just want to speak a quick word to um, the fragrance collectors. So at this point in my collection, I'm pro I probably have about 20, maybe 25 colognes. Um, I've just been doing cheapies, and I decided to go that route because I wanted to start out with, you know, d cheaper designer colognes that I thought would... Um, you know, benefit me, or, or or that I just wanted to smell that, that people said really, you know, you know, are really good. So first of all, I just want to address, you know, the fact that all these fragrance reviewers online, most of them, are mostly focusing around the same fragrances. Some of them are worse than others. Um, some of them only focus on certain designer fragrances. Other ones are a little more varied, and they throw in some niche and um, you know higher quality ones. Um, but I think the reason why they do that is because as far as popularity goes, if they only showed expensive colognes, then, or they only, you know, reviewed and talked about and promoted expensive colognes, then they probably wouldn't have that many viewers. And I don't think they have that many viewers anyways. Like Jeremy Fragrance is killing it. That's because he's just a celebrity. It's, it's his personality. It's his whole you know, it's this whole, everything he puts it in, into his YouTube channel. But all the other guys, they're cruising around 10,000 views for each video, which is not a lot. There's there's some other ones who are maybe getting about 40, 50,000 views a video. Like some other ones who are like, you know, kind of at Jeremy's level, but not really. Jeremy's getting 100,000, hundreds of thousands, 500,000 views for each video and all this crazy shit. So the, there's really no point in... Um, you know, following trends. I think, you know, a lot of guy, you know, a lot of fragrance reviewers think, oh, I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna make a lot of money doing this. I'm gonna be a popular fragrance reviewer. Blah blah. No, you, it's just you should do it because you love it. You should do it because you know you want to talk about colognes and you want to review great colognes that you love. And you know, to a certain extent, you could advertise your business, you could sell merch or whatever, but, you know, you're probably not going to get rich on it, uh, or you're for sure not going to get rich on it, but you're probably not going to make a living doing it either. You, you might get a little money from YouTube, okay? Um, but you're not going to, unless you're on Jeremy's level, you're not going to be killing it. You know, you might get a little bit of extra money to supplement your income, but that's about it. So, to me, it's pointless and I think they do it for the fame or they do it to promote their other businesses for the most part. And they also love it. So whatever, that's cool. But if you're trying to like follow trends and, oh, yeah, that you know, I'm going to jump on the hype beast here and there. I see that constantly with these channels, these YouTube channels. If you're going to do a review, just do a review. If you're going to review a cologne that you like because you got it and you want to talk about it, I have no problem with that. Right. Like, that's fine. But these guys, you who, who you can obviously tell are jumping on the hype train. That you can obviously tell they're really trying to to, to to you know to bump up their numbers, and it's just like it gets cringy. Um, but there's a lot of guys out there that really are passionate about it. You can tell, um, and they really just like reviewing colognes. Guys like Cuba No, um, Big Beer Business. I like Big Beer Business. You can tell he really loves fragrances. Guy named Daniel Sons, cool. Um, Josh, uh, real Josh TV. Um, Fragrance Runner. T TLTG, I think is what is it? You know, TLTG reviews. He's a cool guy. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that just really love doing it, and you can tell, and that comes through, and they don't care about numbers. There's other guys that like, ah, uh, yeah, you can tell they're trying to make a career out of it. It's just like. Well, you know, it, I I don't like that because it's like you, you you don't always get the truth about a fragrance. You don't always get the unvarnished truth, and I like unvarnished truth. I, I like it when guys tell the truth and, and like they're like, yeah, this fragrance is okay, or this one's better, or this that, like that's good because it's like that really helps people find quality fragrances. Okay, that's that's the first thing I want to talk about. The second thing I want to talk about is buying off of eBay and buying used fragrances or buying testers or buying um uh discounted fragrances okay so i've been doing that since i started because i can't afford a lot but also because i've been buying cheapies and i'm, not, I'm definitely not going to pay full retail for a cheapie 
But the mistakes that I made was I bought a lot of colognes off eBay as opposed to like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X or a couple of the other outlets uh, or you know you know the online outlets. And even actually, I I could have gone to TJ Maxx or I could have gone to Ross. When I first was doing that, you know, I was thinking like, oh, these are o these are overpriced. I can get them for five or ten dollars cheaper. But Ross and TJ Maxx, the, the it's going to be in the box and it's going to be newer, the fragrance, right? So if you if you shop on eBay, which is a mistake that I made, and no one told me, no one talked about it, um, these colognes are old. And even on Fragrance Net, I've bought colognes off Fragrance Net that were over a year old, but on eBay, they're like three or four years old. Okay, it depends on the seller. Now, a lot of these little, these little, these little, uh, you know, grifters, these little cheaters, out here, are buying older fragrances wholesale, and then reselling them on eBay. And they're not being honest and giving you the batch code and telling you how old these fragrances are. And I've heard art people argue that oh, they last. Uh, 10 20 years no they last about five years it depends on the fragrance depends on how it's stored but they last about five years before they start to turn um so the people who are arguing and saying oh no they last 10 20 years are, are the ones who know that they're selling older products so these guys aren't being honest and so from now on i'm going to change the game up it, if i do buy something off ebay i'm going to ask for the batch code first and if they don't give it to me i'm not going to buy their product and I might only shop on Fragrance Net um, to to get my discount colognes from now on because at least Fragrance Net it's not three or four years old it's only one years old so I'm not going to pay full retail for for a cheapie that's you know like, like like forty fifty bucks or sixty bucks for a cheapie when I can get it for twenty thirty bucks and it's only a year old that's still a good deal to me but if it's three years old four years old no I've bought in colognes shit the Mont Blanc individual I bought was. 2001 when it was released it's 18 years old still kind of good but it's crazy uh, the aqua de gio was like eight years old but i need to change the game up and i think you guys should too